Hello and welcome in to the 2022-23 Erling Haaland Unique Card Auction Watch. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on Silver, joined by Sean Newsham, PSU fans too, as regularly for the Silver Data Strategy Show today. But Erling Haaland decided to butt in today, and so we had to take a break. But in order to do that, we invited our very good friends, Quinny, Harry Trades. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today on what could be I'm hoping a very exciting auction here since the first Erling Haaland auction was really fun. Quinny, you were there for that one. I actually w went back and watched a little bit of it. The end was absolutely like bananas. Like, it was. <laughs> I don't expect it to do that today for a number of reasons, but still kind of exciting. We've got Erling Haaland here who is now has eight games to break the Premier League single season. Se excuse me, single season scoring record. Quinny, if you were in the market for an Erling Haaland Limited, would you want this Man City one where he broke the Premier League record? Or would you like his rookie card from Dortmund? Well, we spoke about that last year, didn't we? Like the rookie element of it all and like first issue and, and the Dortmund stuff and all the rest of it. I think we did speak about it at the time. It's like if you get one... You know, if he's at Man City or, you know, whoever he was to move to after Dortmund, uh, would that be something? And I think, you know, that we launch edition at the bottom, his first season of the Prem, plus the personal accolades that he'll go for. Like, I do I, I, I do feel that this one probably should be um, appraised a little bit higher than, let's say, the Dortmund one on that. Okay. All right. Before I get to the other two gentlemen here, at least one and Sean, the thank you for everybody for joining us. Uh, Angus was first in. Tuggy's here for Sean's public response to my uh, to my verbal violence from last week. I don't know if we need to get into it with with Quinny and, and Harry here. It's like seeing your parents argue in front of you. It's just not something we need to. Nobody <laughs> needs to see that today. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Olympic managers here. Ricky is here at saying eighty two ETH is the prediction. Ricardo is going in for eighty. I haven't even asked for predictions yet. ZM Star says, I'm going to guess just under what I value. Jao Felix said, which means we're over 100. Which uh, Risu <laughs> is saying 106 is the guess. So thank you, everyone. A bunch of uh, other comments here. We are currently uh, 55 minutes out from what's supposed to be the end. We are at 52.1041 ETH, which is $107,000 for me, or just under 108000 I have no idea what it is in pounds, but Quinny, I'm sure you have pounds up on your screen, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, so I've got the pounds up at uh, 87,600. A lot of money, a lot of money. A lot of bags of sand. <laughs> so first one went for 265 and then sold for 76. I make no judgments on that, but Sean, do you think we, you were just saying before we came on, that you think 76 actually might be higher than what we see today, specifically because that one was posted on the secondary market and J.R. Duke just bought it. I'm assuming J.R. Duke will not buy this one as well. But do you think that there is any sort of, like what Quinny was saying, a launch edition, Premier League, kind of a special? Does that give it any sort of premium over the original Dortmund card? You're, you're muted. You're muted. My bad. Yeah. I like how you're just casually like going over and not acknowledging what ZM Star said. I just like casually just going past it uh, <laughs> because you don't want me to have a spin-off show. And then <laughs> the coffee. I flagged I flagged that one for inappropriate language. Oh, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we talked about it before the show, uh, and so here's the thing: Pranksy was on the platform when the first one went off. Uh, 20 or 21 days ago to J.R. Duke, but we, you made the point that he was probably had all the eggs in the Mbappe basket, and that's why he didn't go for it. And the fact that he would go for it here because he did not get the Mbappe, I tend to agree with that. I think that's probably a reasonable take. The question I have actually, so what's funny here is Bellama told me yesterday he wasn't going to be putting in a, a 50 ETH bid, and then he messaged me this morning. I woke up to him, he's like, yeah, I, I did put in a 50 ETH bid. So the Bellama did come in and say that. So we'll have to see if he keeps going. He's like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so I think, I'm, I'm purely guessing here because I have not spoken to Bellama about this. Bellama won the Joel Embiid unique yesterday 
for 20 ETH, yeah. which I think if we had surveyed many people, they would have expected to go for more just based on what similar cards have gone for recently. And he didn't buy that, the other ones. So like he had the ETH. So maybe there was a, I'm not going to spend it because I got to spend it on Embiid. And now that Embiid goes a little cheaper, you get a little more for, for Hallen. Well, so Bellum also bought Doncic for, for 60 or for 40 ETH the other day. So he and I actually, we talk quite a bit. And, and one day maybe we can get him on here. I don't know if he'd come on here, but uh, it, it's interesting conversations because he's very high on the basketball product and then likes the basketball product quite a bit. So for him, he made the comment, he thinks that like he can get more out of uh, like a Doncic unique and a uh, Joel Embiid unique comparatively to that of like a Holland unique. So like if he's like, I'm going to pay 60 on this or 60 on that, he'd rather do it on the basketball product as of right now. Um, whether or not I agree with that, I don't. But that's what he feels. So, I mean, kudos to him for, for going into the basketball product like that and having that sort of... Uh, that sort of conviction about it. But uh, my, my question is, so let's say we're pretty, we're all pretty certain that uh, the pranks, he would go above 76 here. Is anyone else going to push him there? Because we had the other one on sale for less and nobody was interested in it. So is there really going to be someone that let's say pushes him towards a hundred? I, I don't really know how long it was on the market. Like before, like, I don't know if J.R. Duke like just saw it. He got the Sora data alert, like, oh, the Halland unique is on the market, is available for less than 150 ETH. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'll just buy that. Sure. Zima, Zima was slowly, or mm -hmm. I wouldn't say slowly, but he was quickly reducing the price points uh, on the Holland unique. So I'm trying to see, he never let it expire. Yeah. But it was, he like started at like a hundred and then it was at like 95, then 90, then 95 or then 85. Like he worked his way down. So, but again, I guess Zima is a difficult one because Zima will never accept a trade or an offer. He only wants you to buy it off the market, which is, I mean, is what it yeah, is. That is what it is. So like, I mean, for example, someone could have offered him 72 and we just don't know that. Right. Cause he would have not accepted it based on what we have know about Zima. So um, I think that it could go for above what the previous number was that it sold at. But um, a lot of that goes into what you were asking Quinny is like, I, the, the issue is, is there's what five people that we know of that would be in play here. And that's probably it. Yeah. So I, I wanted to look back because there were a number of people like late in this one, like fantasy teller went big and, and I don't want to say like what happened back then is what's going to happen now, sure. but just like, look at some of the people. I mean, Bellama is obviously there involved. YNWA, we're not going to get Zora anymore uh, on these, but like there were people who were willing to pay that much. And as we always say with auctions, like you only need two people to go back and forth. Like that's, so when I was looking at how Joel and Bede went for so little, it was basically because nobody was willing to battle with Bellama, but Bellama and Max M went back and forth on Giannis, which went for 113, which looking at the prices of every other basketball card is insane. Yeah. Like I think that, it, that I don't think another one got over 50. And so wow. it just takes two people. And if like, we don't need all of these people going, we just need someone in Pranksy right now. It's Bellama and Pranksy. And I feel like the people that we are used to seeing in these situations tend not to bid this early anyway. So whether it's AJ or Fantasy Teller, I don't know if they're still buying cards, but I feel like, again, it, it doesn't take 10 people. It just really takes two to run up. Yeah. The one thing I wanted to point out, because like, we keep comparing it to Mbappe, which just happened. I don't even remember what that Mbappe went for. Like I mean, I think, that, I think the, the, the Mbappe card is a good idea of like who the people are that I would expect to be involved here. So I, yes, I will, I will give you that one. Um, that's not where I was going with it, but yeah, Bambi, I guess. And um, we haven't seen a bottle bore in a while, no. at least. Ooh. But where I wanted to go with this. And one of the things that a lot of people talked about with Mbappe is that, you know, he's obviously doesn't have as much U23 eligibility left that Hallen does. 
it's like Harry, where yeah, you tend to like focus more on the U twenty threes. Is Halland even a card that you considered getting? Because I know Sean is is out on Halland being like at least the best U twenty three forward. But do you put him? Where do you put him enough where? I'm not expecting you to go in on this auction right now, but like, I would love it. That sort of surprise where all of a sudden you just plunk down 75 ETH in front of us. But where do you put Hallen kind of in the, in the realm of the other kind of top U23 forwards? Yeah, it's tough in a way because like, obviously you want your forwards to get the A's and Haaland, you know, naturally just does that, but does he do anything more? Probably not for the most part, right? AA wise. So it's like, but then it's, then it's Haaland. He can score two or three, which kind of... I, I know that's not going to happen every game, but it seems to happen more often than it probably should, right? Which kind of makes up for the lack of DA, uh, AA a lot of the time. Um, but if you look at, like, you know, strikers in and around his age and, and whatever, you, Vinny's probably the first one that comes to mind, right? I think they're, they both age out the exact same year, 2025. Um, you know, if someone said... If, if you say to me, you know, who would you prefer, a Vinny unique or a Haaland unique... Yeah, I'd have to say I'd have to say a Vinny unique because of the 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 sort of AA game that he has um, on Haaland. But at the same time, it's it's early in Haaland, man. Like I don't know, it's just it's hard to not want him if you've got like if these guys have got got the Ethan in the bank ready. Like the guy just prints DAs. Like I don't know what. I, sometimes it's a bit like well. Don't really know. Like on the days that Vinny doesn't get get his DAs, you know Haaland is going to be. So it's just like on those days and on those game weeks, you're probably, you know, if you're going one for one, Haaland's going to outscore him. But the ultimate thing is, you know, when Vinny does score, he does seem to to back it up with some some nice AA. So it's, it's a really weird one. I, I, it's hard to, I don't know, it's hard to, to con conceptualize, I think. Yeah, David Alves is pointing out. So Haaland's all around average, and this is just L5, is 4.7, which is higher then is L15 and L40. <laughs> and like an L15 AA score of 1.5 is wild. Yeah. Like <laughs> that is like Bass Doss territory, I feel like. And yet we're here talking about, I mean, but you see his L40, like only Mbappe is higher in terms yeah. of total. Scores, I, I, so counterpoint to, to this too, because since I was brought up there, um, his unique is a much better card than like his rare is. Right, because his yeah. rare is so. Flame Flong said the Holland is the best U twenty three four. He's just not. That's the problem. Is he? He's good. He's very good. He's a top five to ten guy. But when you're looking at it, you're you're like, man, this guy's got sixty decisives this year, and isn't the top guy. And then you're like, and, and then you're looking at it, and you're like, man, this this AA of four point four. That like so for example like. Yes, he's going to score four goals in games. It's going to happen. It's it's, it's going to happen. Like, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. It will. He's going to play cupcakes and he's going to have some big games. It's it's going to happen. The issue is is that like let's say you're looking at him as a rare, right? 60, 60, 62, 39, 21, 60. That is not cutting it in competitions that you want to play a rare or limited in. In a division 2 setting or a division 1 setting, he functions as a lot better card than what he does in the lower scarcity. Yeah, I, I think the the point we kind of always make is, what what are you getting if a guy doesn't score? And you can say like, well, he always scores, which is wrong. <laughs> and so like when he does score, the the single goal is good, but it's usually not enough. And like you said, Sean, like in rare, there are plenty of U twenty three forwards who can reach sixty, and yeah. so needing somebody to get a decisive, even if it's the guy who gets them seemingly all the time. What is this? 47 decisives in his last 40 games. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not even that. It's, it's literally four. Like it's literally in 35. It's 47 decisives in 35 games. Right. But right. like, yeah, that's the point. I mean, I'm going to give a comparable player that ages out. So this doesn't work. And the only reason I'm giving this name is because Harry's here. Zion <laughs> Fleming. Hey. Zion Fleming <laughs> is very comparable to what you're getting out of Holland right now. Obviously, I would rather have Holland, and he's a much better player. But, like, yeah, Oshman. Oshman's a great example of someone. Again, these guys age out. And so, like, to, to go back to the point, like, if you look at, like, next year and you look at the U23 options and you're just like, 
yeah, it's a lot less appealing because you have Mbappe age out, you have Jesper Carlson age out, you have Joe to age out, you have a lot of good, good players age out. Yeah, literally Zion's in the comparable players range. So Holland goes and is a lot better of a player next year than he is now. Like he is definitely up near the top of the leaderboards, but who's to say Ajax isn't going to bring in a U23 forward or PSV isn't going to bring in a U23 forward type of guy that can be there. Uh, but Holland has no risk, like, right? Like you don't have a risk of Holland tra- transferring to like Wolves and he's, he's dust. Like that's not happening. I don't, so Risu brought up like this is his first city of Man City. He's, he's still young. And I think the second point is what a lot of people think. I think next year his AA game will improve a lot. Why? Like what? He's not going to start taking set pieces. Like he's not going to become a de- some sort of defensive contributor. Like I'm not sure where. No, where it doesn't belief get is. Can't yeah. get worse. Can't get worse, but I guess I mean it could get better. Obviously, it could, right? But there's no like I I don't know if anyone can show me anything or tell me anything that would you know really like prove that it's just man c you know they're gonna win games of football they're gonna win them convincingly and harlan's gonna score a couple of goals every game like it's just kind of what's gonna happen is he gonna turn into this number 10 no <laughs> harlan's is not you know harlan's not really i mean he could look he's, he's 22 years old yeah he could improve on his link of play we can say all these things and you know yeah they and and, he, and it could come into you know it could make him you know score better on the matrix of course it could but I don't know. I think he's mo- we, we know where he's most effective. Everyone knows where he's most effective. And, you know, why would you, you know, don't change something that just like is, isn't not working, you know? And I don't know. Quinny, do you think he's more likely to see an increase in his all around or his decisive score next year? Uh, I would I would agree is all around. So when you were talking uh, just now, I was having a wee poke about and I was thinking he is basically just under 23 Bayern Lewandowski. You know, that's basically yeah. what you're getting with him. And Byron Lewandowski, for all intents and purposes, was a pretty good card. And, you know, I think a lot of people won some stuff with him. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and when you look at Lewandowski, any game where he's got good AA, it's just like four shots on target, three passes inside the box or something, you know. And he's not losing points on jewels, and he's not losing points on BCMs. And when you look at Haaland's AA, that all kind of marries in as well. But a lot of the times, like those scores we see all the 60s, he scored with one shot. And that's a big criticism we've seen from Haaland this year is he's just not actually getting that much, you know, chances or touches or influence in the game. So uh, will he get more shots? I think it's probably cohesion and all that stuff with a team only gets better as time goes on. So I think his AA probably does get better. But I would, what I also wanted to kind of come in and say is I think the whole, what does he get if he doesn't score? I, I think like the way you need to think about a guy like Haaland is more about he's... It's not about thinking about what does he do when he doesn't score. Because if a guy doesn't score, your team's dead anyway. You know, like, it doesn't matter if it's Vinicius Souza. If he doesn't score and you walk home with a 55, what are you going to get anyway? You know, really, it's not much of a difference in reality. But it's how often does this guy... What does it take for this guy to do 80? Because 80, 75 is kind of the number we want guys to be hitting. You need and a brace. For him, you need at least you need, a brace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you need a brace or two goals. But for like, the amount of guys out there that... Uh, and again, it's frequency then on top of it as well, because then how often will he do that? And it doesn't need to be a brace in terms of the two goals. could be a goal and an assist, of course. Um, but because again, like you're only playing to win with a guy like this, and it's the big scores that win. It's not that, oh, he didn't score today and Vinny brought on 52, but Haaland did 33. That doesn't, that's that's tier five and tier four chat, you know? Like, that's yeah. not the podium. Yeah, you're, like, you're looking at him, and like when you put up 60, right? All that, we've talked about it before. 60s keep your lineup alive. That's that if yeah. you get a 60, your lineup's not dead and can continue. So Fling Flong was saying that, uh, and this is a misconception with Holland. I think a lot of people have this misconception. He said the Holland finishes 60 plus points 70% of the time and 80 plus points 20% of the time. That's that's not true though. If you look at his L40, he's played 35 times in his L40, nine of which he was under 45 points. So that means 25% of the time, your lineup's dead. Like, 50% of the time, your lineup's alive. 25% of the time, your lineup's in good shape. That's that's where he's. And that's a great player. Like, I'm not saying that's not a great player. But this isn't a guy that, if he doesn't score, get a decisive, it's just, it's just not great, which is fine. My issue is that, like Quinny just was talking about, 
you need 80 plus to really be in contention to do stuff in a lot in lower divisions. I, I, I again, D2, D1, you give me 60s all day, I'm I'm signing up, right? Because like you get <laughs> 60 to 70 average in D1s from every player, he's great. Uh, and, and I think Lewandowski, I think that uh, Bayern Lewandowski is a great comp. That's what you're getting. The issue is here's my issue with Halan comparatively to like um, Mbappe, right? When he ages out, you have Lewandowski. He just is Lewandowski. And that's just not a player that you necessarily want all the time. Now, granted, Mbappe has been terrible, so you could point to that recently. Like, Mbappe is all 40s, like 40 right or 60 right now. It's pretty, pretty, pretty not great. But the difference is Mbappe has a lot better of an AA game, a lot better of a spike game than that of, uh, of Halan. So you're, you have a situation where like when, when Halan ages out, he loses a lot of the value. When Mbappe ages out, he just becomes one of the top forwards in the, um, in champ Europe. And so like another great example of this is like, I mean, Oshman is probably going to transfer this summer to probably a high end team. And then he basically becomes, let's say he goes to Bayern. I, I was on record last year. Like, I still Ooh. don't know why Bayern didn't bring in Oshman last year. I thought he was a perfect fit. Instead, they brought in Sadio Mane. But that makes no sense. But they did it. Oshman might go to Bayern next year. Let's say Oshman goes to Bayern. So Oshman is now Lewandowski. And then Holland ages out. And then Holland is the same player. Not the same player, but like you get the idea. So that's part of my concern with the Holland price point is like, Mbappe obviously ages out, but once he ages out, he's still top three players long term because of what I think he can give you long term. Like you said, Halan is never going to start taking corner kicks, right? He could start taking some direct free kicks, like that could happen, but he's never taking corner kicks. Whereas like Mbappe, it's within his realm of possibility. Him playing on the wing is within the realm of possibility. It's not for Holland. Like, so we know what we're getting out of him. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is not whether we think Haaland is a good player. It's that he is like two, three, four, five times more expensive than these other guys. Yeah. And like, that's where it becomes weird. Like, should he be three times, I guess, because of the U23, but at least like three times more expensive than Oshaman right now. Yeah. And that seems like a really big premium. And again, he has U23 and Osh like, I'm not sure any of the guys who are, not aging out like he's more expensive than Vinicius, but not by a whole lot. But in U23, there, there are no like extra points for because he's in Champ Europe or because he plays for Man City. And so, like, if Jao Pedro here from Watford can match his scores, then why are we paying 13 times more for how? Yeah, it comes down to like the flex thing at the end of the day, doesn't it? That's what it's like a cosmetic thing and like collectability. Anyone? Maybe if you're a Man City fan, someone in the chat, I think it was, yeah, Metal Gear said uh, a Man City fan might overpay for this card. It might go over the 76. But I was just thinking then, like, Haaland is going to move. Like, it's, it's well known that he wants to go to Real Madrid at some point. Like, that is going to be a thing. Basically, whenever yeah. Benzema hangs up his boots, Haaland's probably going to be Real Madrid's number nine, if we're being honest. Um Mbappe might start. I don't know what happened with with Mbappe. You know, it, it, Mbappe, was... Vinny, and Haaland. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, if, <laughs> if that happened, then you might as well just you might as well just stop playing so right if you don't have any all three of them. <laughs> um, but Can't that, play like, all three in the same lineup. True, unless unless we have um, move uh, position modifiers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the new boost. Yeah. Oh, I, saw, I saw somebody do it. Yeah. <laughs> Send them back. But um, no, I don't. I think that comes into the equation as well. Like that. The fact that, but then does that does that happen when he's out of under twenty three? Possibly. So then it's a bit like yeah, he, like Sean says, he's in the pool of just you know really good forwards in the world type of thing. So like he doesn't stand out as much at that point. Of course, you're going to stand out at uh, Real Madrid's number nine, but um, I do think that has to come into the conversation as well because that will happen. Will it happen in the next two years? I'd like to think so. Yeah, and let, well, let's say it happens, right? And you eventually uh, get to, and that fling pong's not wrong. Like you know, Holland's going to be. And he's gonna he's not gonna go somewhere bad, so he's always gonna yep. be on a dominant team that's he's gonna score goals. For those um, listening, Fling Fong said uh Howland can move to Narnia and he'd still score seven <laughs> sixty four percent of the time. Yeah. 
Sur Surf has said he doesn't understand my point. I, I don't really know how much more clear I can be that when he goes to when he if he's a 64 average player, he's fine. But like when you're sitting there playing him and I'm running Messi, I have a better card than you by by a significant amount. Similarly, like when you run him and I have a healthy Neymar, I have a better card than you. And yes, those guys are older and they're going to retire. But then all of a sudden Vinny Jr. becomes that player. Halan doesn't have it in his archetype to be that player. But let's let's talk about what Harry just said. He goes to Real Madrid and it's him and Mbappe up top with Mbappe running on the wing. You sure shit better have both or you're not going to be doing very well because they're both going to just pile in tons of points. However, in that situation, he's almost guaranteed to not be the better of the two. Yeah, I think you could make... Like, I think the more interesting discussion is whether breaking the Premier League scoring record every season is viable. And, and it might be, right? But, yeah, like, is this guy going to score more goals than anyone's ever scored every single year for the next decade? Yes. Probably. Yeah. I mean, at this rate, probably. But it's a, it's a lot more of a discussion point than, like, you look at, like, Mbappe or Vinny Jr., like we just said. Like, Vinny Jr., in his last... 40 Vinny jr has 25 decisives is Vinny jr getting like 0.6 decisives a game more realistic than holland score getting one and a half per game yes i think that's a lot more sustainable over the long run than that of of Halong. but but again like i said I, I guess i sort of have to take the like the approach to bring down and temper expectations a bit on Halong. but like he's a great card i wish i had one if i had one i would keep it i would use it so it's not like this is a bad card. I'm just saying that there are, it's very difficult. Like, let me ask this question. I think this is the most viable question, right? With the current matrix that we have, do any of you guys ever see Halan being the clear cut best player? Like in the world? Ever. ever. No, on server platform. Depends if the matrix changes. I'm I saying the say. current matrix that we know. Okay. With all the info we know. Mm. No, no. I, I think so. Yeah, it, like Leonard's so? career. Yeah, I think so because, okay. like, like Harry's saying, if he does, like, so the problem we've got with him at Man City is he doesn't get that many touches of the ball, and he can lose jewels because he's not wildly, you know, the quickest guy in the league, and he's not necessarily you know, all the rest of it. If he goes to the Madrid, like, he's like going to be flawless. AA wise, he's not going to miss out on much. He's going to get more shots per game. He's going to get more touches of the ball because it's a different style of play at Real Madrid as well. It's a bit more direct and less tiki taka build up left to right stuff, you know. So I think, yeah, I don't think it, it would take a lot to get him to Bayern, I think, in, in this world because Bayern won't spend the money on him now. He's kind of done Germany as well. But I think when you get him out the Prem in that powerhouse club, I don't think there's any way he goes but up. You just need to look at the numbers. Like, and I know Ronaldo and Messi are a different level, right? But he's on that level as well. And they did 50 goals a season. For like five seasons or something, you know, they rinsed it. And that's, um, and even like, as you guys know, I love a bit of Falcao in my life, Radamel Falcao. When he was playing in that division at that time, he was scoring 40, 45 goals a season, you know? So, like, if you're a proper striker, like in some of these divisions, like, yeah, I, I don't think it gets harder for his career. I think it only gets easier now that he's been in the Prem, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I think all that's relevant. I, I mean, if, if they change the matrix around, like, there's, there's definitely a stat that we all know. That would make mm. him a much better player, and that is removing big chances missed. If if they ever get to a point where or or reducing it, like if you look like the last two games he doesn't have any, but three if you like look back, minus ten, minus ten, minus ten, minus ten, minus fifteen, like you just get a lot of big chances missed by by Halon because that obviously like that's the role he's in, right? So if they if they do change the matrix where like they get rid of that, that's going to be really helpful for him long run. Where do you guys fall? Because a lot of people are bringing it up in the chat about the his injury history and whether it seems like Man City have solved it, but it's also been one season and who knows. But does that it it, it feels like price wise everyone has decided to ignore it now, and that like he missed a lot of games early, like when he was with Dortmund, and he's not really missing any with Man City, as everybody with a Julian Alvarez card has realized, <laughs> but. <laughs> does that pop up to you at all like did that do you think that, that the people who are buying at least like this unique card are just like no nah, he'll just never get hurt again he's fine 
No, I think that's naive to think that any footballer will never get hurt again type of thing. But, you know, what you alluded to then with the Alvarez stuff at Man City, I don't think I don't think Dortmund had the luxury of, you know, rotating a, an Erling Haaland. <laughs> they needed Erling Haaland on that field and at, at any cost. There was no replacement for him, really. Where Man City, bigger squad, more depth, great players off the bench in, in, in Julian Alvarez, where you don't really see much of a drop-off in terms of, you know, output and stuff for the time he's on the field. It's just like, you, you can afford to knock it. Like, you know, you're just not going to get injured as much because you're going to be bought off at halftime like you are on the weekend. Like, those things are going to happen more often than not, where Dortmund, he's probably asked to play far more football than his, his legs probably wanted to. But, you know, he's an athletic build. Like, he's not exactly like a Wayne Rooney type of build. Like, this is a different sort of level of football and the level of sort of athlete we're talking about here. Not to say that, you know, we, we see it with a lot of fast players, you know, their, um, you know, hamstrings seem to go quite often. Even though Haaland, I think, is, well, he is rapid. He, he doesn't really, like, run a lot in a weird way. <laughs> like, you're running, ex like, selective bursts. And, and be effective for that. But for the most part, he's just sort of hanging around the centre-backs and just waiting for that ball to either go over the top in between, you know, header, you know, karate kick, whatever it is. Like, I just don't think he puts himself in, the, in like, the position to be, like, injured as much as, like, he would have at Dortmund, let's say. Yeah, uh, Mike Basson brought up the point that Dortmund's squad quality wasn't up to Man City, and so he had to do more to get all those goals. And now it feels like he can just... Get in the right spot, tap in. I was going to go back to your whether he's like fat. Like he seems like the kind of player who's really fast, but he's not quick. And I know that sounds kind of weird and maybe it's not even right. But you're, you're right. Like we've seen like the highlights of him like going like full pitch. Like those, oh, those yeah. were back in the Jordan days, mostly because I guess they didn't have to do with Man City. But like he is super fast. Yeah. But this we just weekend. don't really see that part of his game with Man City because like they don't need it. No, so maybe that's why he's been able to stay somewhat fitter. I don't know. Yeah, I agree more than like an Mbappe would. Like most of Mbappe's goals, you see him like uh, the plays down, you know, off the off the left a little bit more. But like he's always taking players, taking players on, you know, going past players and stuff. Haaland doesn't really. No, that's just not his game. He's just not that type of football. Right. He's more of a number nine. But like this weekend against Leicester, I'm just recalling Haaland's. Um, first or maybe second goal, he chipped the keeper. Like he's got in between the defenders there, but the way the, the pace he's done it at is like, fr like the t I think it was Wout well, Feist and Harry Suter. Like they're looking at each other, like we can't do anything. This guy is just absolutely rapid. Like he's literally just burst through and obviously dinked the keeper. But the the way he's got in between them, as if like they weren't even there, was just frightening in terms of pace. So he, he obviously has it, but like you said, he, he probably isn't needed to. To bring it out as much because Man City dominate the ball so much, you know. Why would you need to run in behind if you have the ball all the time? Yeah, and Ian just brought up that point. He said because man, teams sit off Man City so much, he doesn't have to use the pace as much as he did in Germany. Hundred yeah. percent. You're you're dominating possession at Man City, where like the pace just doesn't matter as much. It's more about your clinical skills and your technique than it is about your ability to run past people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are just under twenty five minutes left. We've had no movement since the last check-in. Pranksy still up top at 52 and change. ETH, and just under $108,000. I'll admit it is still fun, despite everybody saying that Sober is going to zero, that seeing somebody willing to, two people willing to spend over $100,000 for a JPEG is always nice to see. Always fun. That's yeah. I was thinking as well, I wonder how much auto bidding might come into this because we've seen a totally different tactic on the Mbappe one where it was like trying to discover where the bids were. And now if, like, I'm looking at the bids when we come on. It looks like, you know, the auto bids that they previously set, you know, have all been, you know, maybe they're just going to keep their powder dry a wee bit longer rather than putting the mega bid out there uh, just yet, you know. So that might be a wee tactic that comes into it later. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't needed that myself, so. <laughs> Likewise. I'm not max bidding 50th anywhere yet, so we're, uh, <laughs> we're there. I don't know. Uh, what was the, does anybody remember what the last big uh, unique was before Mbappe? Kimmich. I think it was Kimmich. Was it? Yeah. I can't remember now. No, I mean, you, well, you might not know this, but do you remember what Almada sold like two weeks ago? You know what Almada's price was? I don't. 15. 17.99, I think. So it was like 20, 18 ETH on, on an Almada. Tasty. World Cup winner. Nice that, that is there. valid. That is true. It's a nice card. 
Yeah, all right. So no, can works. Someone says in the chat, works was a big one recently. Well, works was a big one last year when he died immediately after Fantasy Teller bought him. That was that was that hurt. Oh, of course, that was that right weekend. after that. Yeah, that yeah. weekend. Yeah, Vertz was. Oh, yeah, yeah, or forty-one Roxy. three months ago. To Rock, or Roxy has two of them. Because why not? This classic well, DC right positions? there. Are they different positions? They might be different position cards. Ooh. And if they are, having two is not not that bad of an idea. Yep, they are. Yeah, there you go. Like, because he, it's a different situation where he can play than what fits the best. Well, yeah, because if you have the midfielder, then you can Fling play him with your and your hound. Fling Flong just said Wurtz forward card will be the best forward in Champ Europe next year. That can't be the case, Fling Flong. You told me it's Halon. That is true. <laughs> he'd rather have the first. Fling Flong, Fling Flong has come back. He said he'd rather have a Wurtz forward than a Halon. Uh, I agree with that, actually. I think Wurtz has a really, really good shot at being the, the highest forward card or midfielder card. Like That card just could be really, really, really good. Um, so his new, so yeah, so he doesn't show up on the forward. Um, well, I think he's ranking. back to a midfielder again. Yeah, right. He's back yeah. to midfield. And I'm not saying the midfield's a bad card either. Like the, both Wurtz cards are like really good. Like his forward card, his midfield card over the last year, which includes like this is the funny thing. He's averaging sixty a game right now. But he has five sub appearances in this in the seventeen games he's played, and he's averaging sixty. That's damn impressive. That's so his four midfield cards averaging sixty. His forward cards averaging sixty three. Yeah, he's he's seventy in his starts since coming back. Yeah, seventy four as a forward. Yeah, Scosmo, Scosmo, the great shout. I I had I had multiple people this weekend sending me highlight packages of Cherokee telling me LOL Laird multiple people. <laughs> you know what's funny is that somebody also pointed out they were like, oh, all of the highlights are from the first half and he actually had like a dreadful second half. That was a good comment that that person made. We will ignore that for the the, the part of the discussion. But uh, <laughs> yeah, works works to me is the most likely person to be like that guy. Because like if I look at him and just what he's done over the last like two years when he gets his chances he's definitely shown signs of being like that guy yeah does what's his most likely next spot hmm there's been there was there was barcelona rumors for for a couple of weeks but that kind of died down uh bayern's one that's always um so, yeah, floated around his his name for a while but that'll depend on i think at the time musiala wasn't musiala so maybe you know, there was maybe there's a less of a need for awards than now. But yeah, I would say it's Bayern somewhere in Spain, i.e. Real or Barca. And then if Chelsea want to be not silly because he's a great player, but like it just like Chelsea spending 18 million on words just feels like something that they would do. Yeah. Um, yeah in, the like, current, in the current state, you know, think, I think as long as you don't play for Chelsea, you're probably a possible <laughs> Chelsea target. <laughs> and that's like, I legitimately, I think that the, like, you cannot rule out that he goes to Chelsea. And who knows what Chelsea look like when he gets there, if he gets there. But if he went like this summer, you'd be furious. And I don't think you would expect the same output if he went there. Meaning, he be as, as like Sean that. likes to say, there are, he, he's not without death spots. <laughs> and until I, but that might be the only legitimate one. Well, yeah. here's the interesting part for Wurtz, and I'm not sure. All of these teams we talked about, right, though you just said, I think they all have different positions for Wurtz. And That's his position that he's going to be playing on a team dictates which card version I would rather have. Um, if he ends up, like, at, I don't know, it's hard for me to, to describe, but like if he goes to, like, Barca – and like plays in the Pedri spot or something like you're looking at it and you're like, I'd much rather have the midfield card. But if he ends up at Bayern and plays in the, the, the Moeller role, you'd much rather him have the, the forward card. So like, I think it's definitely a question of like where he ends up going, which card version you want. Barca mm -hmm. still doesn't feel like a great spot to me still. No, There's too many guys there. 
they're gonna they're gonna have a big seller, I think, this summer though. Like fatty looks to be going. We stay there around. every year. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so like guys, this, I mean, yeah. some more levers, they'll be fine. <laughs> you, you don't have a fatty card anymore, do you, Harry? No, I don't. All right, so we can make fun of him easily. I mean, I don't know yeah. why a guy starts like <laughs> we, no, we can make fun of him when I had him. It was fun. Yeah. Dude starts one game a season. I don't really think him leaving like opens up boatloads of playing time. Not so much about interested just, in him. Yeah, Tottenham won him. There's loads of weird rumors. United have been linked with Fatty. I mean, they're gonna be right. Everyone. I mean, they're just gonna take a gamble on you know him being physically sort of um, you know better than what he has been. But I, I saw a crazy stat about Fatty, which really scared me like last week, and it was something like in like in his whole Barcelona career, he's only played 90 minutes five times. That's more than I would have guessed, to be honest. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like since 16, so like four years of playing. I think he's 20 right now. I know he's been injured for a lot of that, but ultimately five games is frightening. Super subby. Yeah. I bet it was a long time ago, too. Like it was probably like his first. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that was that's for Spain. Spain. That was Spain. Yeah. more for Spain than he does for Barcelona. <laughs> Literally. Jesus. Man. No, I mean, I, I love I love Florian Wirtz card. I think that his it's a great card to have. I've tried to get a super rare. I haven't had success at it. But like, I it just there's a lot of questions for me. So so Bouncy said his best position is the number 10. I, I probably agree with that. The issue is so like, all right, here's my counterpoint to Wirtz and where the reason why I just don't really know where he's going to go. Every team that you just mentioned, I, I it like doesn't make the most sense. Like it, it's. Obviously, adding words is a great addition, right? But it's also like, does it make the most sense? Like Bayern, like are you gonna are you gonna bring him in? And when you have like Musiala, you can run in that role. I know Musiala is probably gonna run out wide, but like it, it makes it a little bit more of a of a decision point. Same thing, like are you really where does he fit within the Barcelona style? Because I don't it's really good. know where he fits best. And, and so like that's the thing with words for me is like I think he's great. I just don't know who's gonna. Comfort, I don't know where he fits the best at. Yeah, I mean, probably where he is right now yeah. is the problem. Yeah, because he's the main man at Leverkusen, and that's the right. issue. Like, he's going to move to a, a bigger, better club on paper, and 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 he's naturally going to have less of a responsibility because there's just better players around you. You don't need to do as much. It's simple as that. So, in in a weird way, that could that could affect his scores in in a negative way. But then you could also say, well, if he's a team that scores more goals and creates more chances, then obviously you know his, his scores are going to you know improve. But there's no guarantee he gets set where he goes. Like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of unknowns. I think. I think that... Sorry, oh, Winnie. Yeah, I was going to say I think Sean's nailed it in the sense that like it depends where he goes and who kind of needs him and all the rest of it. And I think Leverkusen are pretty much on record with saying that. They've priced works out of a move to Bayern with minimum fee releases and all that stuff. They don't want to sell them to Bayern. They want to put them out to a big fish for a lot of money. And uh, I think, for, for me, like thinking about potential places he could end up, one of the people that are really strongly linked to him is Real Madrid. And if you put him in the Real Madrid midfield with Chumene, Valverde, Camavinga for the next 10 years, and we're talking about the front three Real Madrid might get their hands on as well at this rate, then, um, you know, I think... That's why I would. I think that's that's the place to to think about and going probably because I don't think Bayern have got the money for it. And like you say, with England, <clears throat> who's Liverpool should pay the money from. Liverpool should spend all their money on them, but they're not going to spend any money while they they're trying to sell the club or whatever, you know. And then outside of that, the rest of the teams in England probably aren't going to spend what Leverkusen are after. So then you end up with Real Madrid and they're doing Galacticos transfers again. Works one summer, Mbappe another, Haaland another, or whatever. Who knows? Anyway. It's my fault. <laughs> that Madrid midfield is cra- like I love it. It's crazy. Like too many Kamavinga. Like those guys are so fun. Yeah, and they're all like twenty. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Kamavinga <laughs> barely plays. <laughs> Fling Flung says you don't even have the money to buy the Verts forward card. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, well done, Ping <laughs> Flop. That was a good one. Um, Zinger. All right. We are at 13 minutes, 44 seconds left. Pranksy still winning. Does anyone think it ends here? 40, 52 ETH? No. That no, seems like it'd be shockingly low, right? No. But not that I'm in any position here, but if that price feels like something where one of the other whales is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not letting it go for that. So they just. Then they start attacking it. But again, 
a lot of these guys wait till the last minute anyway. Indeed. Right, so I think, yeah, I think there's a wee bit of keep the auto bids to yourself and then, you know, it's draw your guns at dawn once it gets to the last minute or two. <laughs> Have a shootout. So I like, I get, there was a, a tweet response that I got on this one. Will this card go for more ETH than the number of goals Hallen finishes with this season? I don't know what he's at in all competitions. He's close well, to like 60, isn't it? Wasn't it just Premier League, though? Or was that it was all? the whole tweet. Will this card go for more ETH than number of goals Erling finishes the season with? I think it's probably already over that. You don't think he scores 52 in all competitions? I thought um, he was over that. When did I'm trying to see when it started. I'm trying to see. Uh, so when are we counting like as the season started? Like, are we counting like last summer's like Euro qualifiers and stuff? No, no, no. I think it's like, you know, yeah, FA Cup, season. Carabao Cup, like all competitions for Man City. Not so rare. Oh, I don't know. How many does he have for them right now? He could have. Wait, I'm checking. Yeah, he's got a bunch. Well, he definitely has a bunch. I just don't know how many he has right now. Yeah, more than a bunch. That's, that's um, I think it's close to 50 or 60, though. No. 32, 35, 11 in the Champions League, 46. Yeah. He's on 46. So he's on 46. So, I mean. No uh, no FA Cup or the other one, Carabao? Everyone 47. else. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> 47. I missed the cup. <laughs> All right. 47. Thank you, everybody in chat. Oh, so, I don't know. Like, give him 60. I don't think there's any chance he goes under 60. Okay. No. Personally. I mean, I guess he could score more goals. They have quite a few more games. Like, in theory, he has, like, what, 10 more games? Yeah. They go so for the treble as well. Yeah. No, I still think it, a 60 is probably a good, like, number to give it. I still think it'll go over 60. Didn't Messi have 100 season ones? I can't remember. Uh, it was like calendar year. That, yeah. Calendar year. Oh, calendar year? Yeah. So that was, like, a January, December effort. So Ballon d'Or's calendar year. I think that's why everyone made some sort of stat about it. Gotcha. But, um... Yeah, no, I, I, like, like we said at the beginning of the stream, but I do think like all the like this stuff we're chatting about does tie into the card as well. Because even though, like, see if you have the Bayern, uh, pardon me, the Dortmund, uh, Haaland, and you've played it with this season, if you've been on Soria playing the cards and all the rest of it, that's one thing because you remember all the goals he scored for you and whatever. But anyone in their armchair turning on the television, there's only one shirt they see him wearing, and it's the one that's in this card, you know, and if it's you know, it is, a, it is a very understated part of, of the market. And if you're playing with the big blue chip stuff and the high end stuff that like we're talking about, then those little details do make all the difference. You know, you hear about things all the time that, that makes it 10 million X the value because it's a, so it's a special detail to it. You know, it's the details that, that, that make the difference in price. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Are you showing the rewards won by by Halon Unique? Mm, that's right. That was, Oof. Look at that. Yeah. Oof. That is rotten, man. <laughs> Not great. Wow. I, I will say that during the first auction watch, like when this one went crazy, I remember there were multiple people in the chat, some of which, some of whom bid on that card. Yep. That were pretty much like. They don't. The, the argument against Zima buying the card was that he didn't have the right cards to put around it to to win that much with it, regardless of yep. the price. And that's exactly. I mean, what we're with. no, we're not. We're not. No, you can no get stuff together and win stuff with. Yeah, that's a what? bad excuse. Oh, you certainly could. I'm just saying at the time, they were like, you're not going to be able to start winning from this right away because you need I more pieces than that. I think it's just more of a managerial issue. We'll call it that. Fair. Because yeah. that is rotten. Like that but is worst case, thing. you could play D2 You could play D two with oh, worst case. You know what I'm saying? I if, mean, if I, you... could, I could... We're just going to go with managerial issues. He's also a terrible uh, Very threshold. Speaking, speaking of 60, which, someone... 15, not helping you in unique with the threshold. Speaking of which, someone that probably could win this card today may have similar managerial issues. Thanks, Potentially. Potentially. I'm, I, 
can't believe you're calling anyone out here, Quinny, but just. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This is what we needed. So red beef. We've been waiting for it. Well, they sent me up now. <laughs> yeah. Finally, everyone, yeah. everyone expected so rare beef to start with Quinny for sure. <laughs> right. Here's a better question for you, for you guys. So Laird obviously knows who I think is the worst manager on the platform. Laird confirmed, you know who I think it is. And you, you think it's the same person, correct? Okay. Harry, do you know who we are talking about? No, no, name. Name. Sure. Name. No, 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 I don't think I did to be fair. No. Okay. Quinny, do you know who we probably are thinking? No. Okay. So anyway, so my question then says these two don't seem to know who I think is the worst manager on the platform. Rascal says it's him. Rascal, I, I'm, I cannot give you that honors. Unfortunately, someone has, has set a high, high bar to, to go for. Um, Scosmo says, name them. Scosmo, you are the most DGen manager on Sower. You win that title, but not not unfortunately this one. Dang, Simo says John Nellis. Um, I will say that John Nellis Whoa. is not the name. Oh, another yeah. person said John Nellis. Apparently, people are coming out with with guns blazing for John Nellis. John Nellis, <laughs> John Nellis may not be someone I would put at the top level, but uh, he's I like not. Mike, I like Mike trying to trying to hide it. Somebody in the adverts. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Okay, I, actually, no, I have it. I have it. I have it. Okay, you send me a send me a DM. Don't send me a DM on Discord and, and say who you think it is. I will. And I will tell if you're correct. As Harry sends it right into the chat. Uh, <laughs> Fling Fong said Nellis is decent. I'm I'm not gonna give Nellis decent Fling Fong, but you know, um we I've can just said it, dude. we can pretend. I, either way, wait, what is the point? No, here? no. <laughs> Harry Harry gave me a name and it's definitely but he, not that he is bad though. <laughs> and, the person and the, I'm thinking what, is, say, what is the point here? So the point is, <laughs> the point is, do you think, Laird, that if the person winning Halon is a worse sober manager than that person? Do you think it's possible? I, I think we I think the 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 battle for who is the worst sober manager is not over. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, a, long, it's a long-term game. It's a long-term game. And sure. Uh I, we there's yeah, so I think so. Yeah. Part of the like worst manager stuff that we talk about is <laughs> Jakun says Nellis is bad on purpose for the content, which is I agree game. with that. I agree with that. To to some extent, I agree with that. So the a lot of it that that we like talk about of like people who are not good are like playing like obvious DMPs or like splitting up like perfectly correlated plays or entering contests that like they have cards for one contest and they're like entering in another one for some reason. Like those are the types of things that we, that we gauge in deciding like who struggles with this game. Like yes. I'm trying to say this as nicely as possible. Well, well, you, you technically broke off two people. Cause I know who you were talking about. Tony Watt. I actually wasn't even talking about specific people because they're <laughs> yeah. like, there are lots of people who fall into every one of those categories. Did, did you just see, did you just see Quinny's face with, with the recognition of Watt? Yeah. <laughs> Quinny, Quinny Tony wins. Like, yeah. Tony wins more than me. So I, I can't take any shots at Tony. <laughs> to, Tony has Tony's issue is Tony just has like no patience for anything. I was going to say Tony, <laughs> Tony makes, uh, Tuggy look like a very stable. Uh, no, so rare. I love I how love how Tony has one plan one week, and then he's like, "Okay, so I sold everything, and I bought super rares, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, I won super rare specialist back when they had that or whatever it is." Like, yeah. I love the way Tony plays. Yeah, it's. I, I like when Tony won. Tony had a good lineup this weekend. I wonder what Tony uh, is doing in um in all star he, he was. He was first. Eight He's 11th, so that's pretty solid. Um, so, anyway, anyways, Tony, Tony knows what he's doing. Sometimes Tony just like sits there and he's like, "I, Tony, Tony's biggest." And I've told Tony this. So if Tony's is Tony still here? I think Tony was here at some point. I told Tony this. Tony's biggest issue is he doesn't understand two things. Thing one, what a good player is. Tony doesn't like really understand what a good sober player is because he sees someone as like a good player in real life. Like he was, he messed with me the other day. He's like, I'm thinking about getting James Sands for like all-star rare super. I'm like, James Sands has cracked 60 less than you have in the last like, like two years. 
And then <laughs> he, also, <laughs> he also doesn't understand the um the like what what exactly like a DNP is and like He'll tell me a guy is a really good player. I look at the guy and it's like, tell me this guy hasn't started seven of the last 10 games. He's like, yeah, but when he starts, he's really good. I'm like, that's not how this game works. Tony. Like, <laughs> doesn't cut it. Uh, so there is nothing that I'm enjoying more. The fact that we are less than three minutes away from somebody spending over a hundred thousand dollars for an Erling Haaland card. And all we're talking about is Tony Watt. I mean, I love it. We, we can talk about Carlos Gill if you want. Just from one go to the other, man. I mean, that's... Speaking of, Tony, if you are watching or listening, please, please find the time to get back on End Product. As much as I love that show with yep. Quinny and Fish, that three-man weave is... Yeah, Quinny, you, you you asked me to be on again. I'm I'm a lot more free at this time of year. You let me know. You, me, Stish, and, and Tony will we'll round up a show. Sounds fun. We need Tony I, I over think... to the States for some content purposes so that I can... Show him how to <laughs> keep the ball out of back of the net. <laughs> That'd be a good banner for sure. I think, uh, like, you know, j- just to finish up what you're saying there, like, I think uh, Tony definitely does like changing the strategy a lot, but when the strategy's built, wherever he's moving between strategies, when he builds one, it tends to win something, and then he'll yeah. go, right, I've done that, now I'm going to sell it all, and I'll come up with something yeah. different, yeah. and then he'll, he'll go on his merry way and get it done, you know, so. He's the, um, the perfect example of there is no, like, single correct way to play this game yeah um, yeah he looks like he enjoys it all right, right minute 40 left still at 52 ETH. sean throw a bit in please <laughs> i unfortunately am a little bit over what i have balance wise right now just a smidge david alvis said someone wake up roxy i don't i mean if you have mbappe do you need allen no the age is out you don't need both different game different games hmm would well, be we're get to under no a minute. Up. If no one shows up, I would just be like the most anticlimactic thing ever, where we had an hour and a half long show where the last bit was like four days ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm like refreshing <laughs> just to make sure it didn't didn't bug out here. All right, we Oof. are under a minute. Oof. Nobody else is here. People are getting out their card details. Oh, there we go, oh, Bambi boy. There we go, Bambi pulled in, and Branksy has Max bit him over. Poor Harry's guessing people that I don't even consider in the, the realm of discussion oh. here for worst manager ever. I just told Harry who I think. Yeah, is. yeah. Okay, fair enough. I honestly I forgot they even played. That's that's the only clue I'm going to give out to who Sean deems the worst. Would you also think, agree that I'm probably told me they didn't play anymore, I Yeah, yeah. You're probably yeah. You're definitely yeah. I mean, I don't. I, yeah. Sixty. So, Pranksy, what do we think Pranksy's max bid is here? Because oh, no. Bambi seems to be doing individual bids, 100. and Pranksy's automatically outbidding. Oh, okay. We're I reckon 100. Well, eight, I reckon he's putting 80, as in like into the, the max bid thing. Yeah, all right. Bambi up to 71.3, and then Pranksy's 74.16. 74. 74. So, Arya, right, here's the thing, too. At least he's oh, oh. max. At Clean least gets 75 as a max bid, and it looks like we hit that. The Bambi max bid? 77.1298. Top last spot. time, Pranksy came in one over his max bid, I think. But I was going to say, the max bid is actually helpful because the max bid keeps your bids down. Uh, if because if someone yep. comes in right yeah. below you, it just pumps you up like point oh. oh! Wow! <laughs> now this is so, so, so red beef at his finest. What is going on? <laughs> that is definitely yes. not someone I expected to show up. Yes, Pavel, get that it, is son. Amazing. Get it, Absolutely Pavel. Amazing. Yes. He put a max bid, in, and he's going even higher. Eighty-three hundred and seventy-two thousand yes. dollars for Pavel Trader. Interesting. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, Pavel, get the card up. back out, big man. Get the card back <laughs> out in there. Bambi at eighty-six point uh, seven six now. I, wow. I think I think that's probably it. I that was an interesting name that I did not oh, think was come realistic. Come on, Pavel, do this. Oh, one. Pavel, come on. <laughs> That is never, you would have, if you gave me a hundred guesses, there's no way. I'm no, no like, I, here's a serious, serious question, Laird. Do you, would you have been more surprised if I put the bid in or Pavel? Pavel. Well, yeah. I would have literally never guessed Pavel. Yep. Same. Oh, oh come on, Pavel. <laughs> I'm so I, I think that's it. I don't think we get another one. That, that oh. was interesting though. That's for sure. 180 grand. Go out, Pavel. Do it. Son. Dollars. It looks like Bambi's <laughs> going to take this one unless we get one of these last second uh, 
<laughs> Johnny said the 149% seems to have paid off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. That is oh, money, isn't it? Man, that must have been what I had in his wallet. 86.3 ETH. It must have been his wallet. 86.7609 for Bambi. Congratulations, Bambi, on winning that one. Pavel, man. GG's. I'm lucky, bud. If, if, if Pavel won, that would have been a like community card, right? Like everyone yeah. had a piece in that. It's a DAO. <laughs> it's a DAO card. It's a DAO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pavel, can I, can I borrow that for a little bit? <laughs> I just love that his like most valuable card right now is the Jonathan David unique, which he accidentally gave away. And he's like, maybe I'll go get the Howland. Oh, How do you feel player. about the so rare ecosystem that the number one trader on the platform was willing to spend $179,000 on a card that clearly he would have tried to resell because he barely plays SO5 anyway? He plays SO5. I mean, he does because he has the cards. At no point are you looking at any lineup and you're like, oh, he built that lineup to like got got those cards for this sort of situation. Like hmm. oh, it's all I about imagine, the so rare coins, Larry. You see, you're talking about galleries that card could go into. Imagine Haaland and Pavel's gallery. He would have won more than Zima <laughs> did with it. He would have won more than Zima did with it. Like, who would be in goals? Who's in who's who's the unique goalkeeper that Pavel's got? I've looked at this. It's not a pretty list. <laughs> Concept <laughs> builder that layout. <laughs> Are we looking U23? I, don't, I wonder if he even has a U23 one. I bet you has a few He's gates and kooks in there. So many cards. He has to have a couple in there. I don't know who any of these guys are. <laughs> oh, There's the oh. good. There is. There is. Oof. Oof. We maybe have something there then, eh? We're getting yeah, there. Something. Let me Why just take out. I know you can play a super rare, but let me just take out the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, for those listening, we're in the uh, lineup builder putting together... Oh, wow, look at that. That's a smash. That's not pretty. Might want to use a super rare mid. Yeah, we'll go back to that. Oh, Jonathan David. Obviously, he plays David. I don't even know if Halan gets in the lineup. He doesn't even, yeah, he doesn't even. Oh, yeah. And then Halan <laughs> here and then Super Air mid. He didn't get in the lineup. That's why he pulled back. Cuts. He was like, wait, I have the David. I don't really need. Yeah. Yeah, what's the need to do? I've made him out of it just for good times. Well, he's got Maybe Pavel was a safe fun. He's got the Alkmaar stack. Anyway. Oh, he's got Vlahovic, too. Speaking of, Man, water, I really brings, wish you won that one. That brings back some good conversations when you and I were just dragged for like ragging on Vlahovic. Yeah, I remember that conversation actually. He, he's been great. <laughs> a lot of people like to get to compare with Vlahovic. Yeah, why did we not compare him when the goals dry up? Here you go. Yeah, that's. Yeah, but that's more the case of Vlavic being a bit of a false coming in my in, in my in my mind. I don't think that's a a slight on the the profile of the player. If you know what I mean, like the the striker that would know AA. I think that's just more Vlavic no, isn't good enough to be that good for Juve. He's, no, no. Well, it, I would I would also say Juve is not good enough for him either. Type of thing. Yeah. Like, it's pretty, like if you put him on if you put him on Man City, he has <laughs> like twenty five. I actually had the UV game on yesterday, and I'm not kidding you. I actually fell asleep for about three minutes. Like, it, <laughs> like I'm not even joking. Like it was awful. It was a Sassuolo. It was a terrible game. I think Sassuolo won one nil. Maybe been a red card. It was so boring, honestly. Like that's the first time I've watched UV this year. It was yep. one nil, one nil Sassuolo. Literally, the only person in the game. There was four people in the game that cracked like sixty. Yeah. Apparently, Frank, Frank said in Discord. Said. But Jonathan B, that's just not a good I excuse because if you're busy, you just up your max. Bid. You just max bid to a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, you max bid to a hundred if you're willing to pay a hundred. So, like, I, I just don't think the "I'm busy" excuse yeah. is. It used to be a valid excuse because I definitely have missed auctions where I just didn't have time to be there for an auction or something. But like with the new max bid, like, yeah, if you were busy, you just have a bid higher than seventy-five if you're willing to go above seventy-five. Right. I think the the. The max bid feature, I think we all know 
that when we go into an auction and we think I'm, this is whatever the amount is, this is the absolute max I'm spending. We all know it's two bids higher than that. It is. That's true. <laughs> Somebody gets our max bid and they go higher and you're like, all right, let me go one more. So he may have looked at, cause he went to a hundred for Mbappe and he was like, all right, I won't go above 75 for, for Hallam. And maybe he's not going to go to 89, 90, whatever the next one is, but Maybe he goes to eight, you know, it's like, oh, I actually would have gone to 80 or something like that. So, I don't yeah. Know. But also, pranks, we, we, we're giving you a little shit here, but we're glad to have you in the community. It's good to see someone else come in that will be partaking and stuff like this. So, absolutely. Glad to see that you're here, even though we're giving you a little shit. I would say, but like, if you're going to be spending like 180K on a card or something, you know, like, I'm sure you could free up your diary for half an no, hour. No, see, I, all right. Here's the thing, Quinny, rich people, <laughs> Rich people, they don't care. Like rich people, if they're going to like lunch and they are trying to win this card for two hundred thousand dollars, they're just like, I'm going to lunch. I'm at whatever. That's just like I feel like that's the rich person mentality. Whereas like I in the past have like woken up at three a.m. to pay six ETH for a Daike Matsuoka card. Like it's like like you you the four of us here like we're waking up, we're gonna be there, we're canceling plans, changing meetings. Rich people are just like meh, whatever. I mean, yeah, I've met I've met Duke, and I can tell you. Like well, those guys are very busy, so I can see why they would not, you know, partake. Not that he, he doesn't have a hard need because they do, but you know what I'm saying. Like like Sean says, there's there's plenty of things going on in their worlds that, um, yeah, it doesn't relate to to so rare cards and auctions. I will say that the the one thing yeah. the max bid seems to have taken out, particularly with this one, as uh, Morris shared that Franksy in the general Discord said he was driving, didn't think it would end like right at, I guess it's six p.m. where he is. The the max bid, like we we are used to seeing like it count down to five, four, and then like people put in their next bids. But now because of the max bid, it's just instantaneous. And so the the auction ended 38 seconds after it said it was going to. Yeah. And we're used to seeing like four or five bids mm -hmm. come after four or five minutes. So theoretically, if he was like, oh, I'll just check in it for my time, 103, maybe I'll still get it, but it's it's gone. Yeah, Jonathan B just said, and this is this goes to what you just said. He said he didn't plan more than 75 ETH, but might have FOMO. That's very accurate. Because like Absolutely. I will typically I'll set like max bids, but like typically my max bid is like that is a price I definitely want it at. After that, I'm gonna think about it. Is how I set my max bids usually. Do you uh -huh. think do you think that there's any chance that Jesus? So Oof. family now has Oof. Mbappe and Hallen Uniques, along with Jude and Chuameni and my God, everything else you'd ever want. Any chance wow. Pranksy DMs and says, I'll give you 90 and he takes it? No chance. None, right? Not a 90. I mean, I, I think the answer would be no, even if you have like 100. But maybe, maybe. I just don't think so. It doesn't seem like something. If you have 18, almost 1900 ETH, it's like $3.2 million dollars of cards you're not flipping to wick to get three and a half ETH. Even yeah if it's, you're it's not a three sure. and a half ETH is not making a huge deal no like maybe if you talk to like 20 ETH, like maybe you offer him like 100 110 like maybe right. he would consider but like, yeah no no chance at, at that hmm. some gallery like harry he's got mr bang average pedri in there you should you should go and uh <laughs> You know what? It's actually a good time in Sean because Pedri will be starting this weekend's game after a long two months out. There we go. <laughs> he will come back to just ripping his 60s. <laughs> yeah. Was the original Pedri 90 or am I confusing that with... Hmm. Did I'm pretty sure Gavi or... went for more. And we Gavi went may have been 19 feet. Oh, maybe. Uh, let's see. Oh, hmm. wow. There's probably that in uh, pounds maybe. Did yeah. Gavi go for more? Yeah, Gavi was 90. And we're all just sitting there like, that doesn't make sense. That, that could be rookie one of the Gavi, worst. But remember? Yeah. That was rookie Gavi. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That was rookie Gavi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nicholas Brenner just said he just got his rare Botcham stack. And I was going to say, Scosmo, this is your new friend. But Scosmo already has found his new friend. <clears throat> <laughs> Bokum. Man. So everything's fine now, right? 
Market's just going to go up from here? Um, hopefully. We're all ready. Right Honestly, man, I want, to, I want to slip into the dimension where Pavel won this unique and see what he had to put on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think his profile picture, his cover screen, is everything. Yeah. Get a Holland everywhere. We can confirm that if he won that and someone offered him 100, he would have taken that. Yeah. yeah. I think if he won it, he would have immediately put it on the market for 999 ETH. And just yeah. left it there forever. I was, I was trying, trying to, to work out. The next rare is gone. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I was trying to work fun. out what team um, Pranksy supports. And I, I think it could be Newcastle. Some of the early ones were uh, Newcastle cards. I know he bought Isak and. Um... Yeah, he's got he's got four Newcastle uniques. Right. Mm, I don't know. A wee bit yeah. of that, but is what's going on auction, you know, because you can only buy what they're selling. Yeah. You know, and there's a bit of that going on as well. ZM Star like yeah. in Newcastle. Okay. Yeah. ZM Star wants a show where we get me shitting on other managers sponsored by Sower Data Laird. Just... The issue, <laughs> ZM Star, the I, account, just do it. The issue, ZM show. Star, is I'm only willing to publicly shit on my friends. Like, you want me to shit on Laird or Harry or Quinny? Fine. No problem. Happily do that. <laughs> Nobody well, wants you to do that. I, in terms of other people, I will keep the, the things under wraps about other people. Who? Some gallery. Like where did that, let's go. Here we go. Who's next for a big one? I know like the season's ending, but do we have any others coming up? I don't think there's another big like, one. Almada is probably the best ML, like summertime one, right? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That is Ooh. disrespectful to Carlos Gill. For you right, what'd you say, Quinny? I, I'm just ignoring Sean. At this <laughs> Queek? Oh, Queek? yeah. You think he'd go for more than Almada? No. He's no the, if anyone's got a shot at it, he's probably the one. Who? Ricky Queek? Queek. No chance. No, no chance. Yeah. If, if someone was going to, it would be him. Yeah, I don't... I mean, if... No? Uh, no. I, don't I mean, there's not much competition. Team. That's the problem. That's, there's that's, no... that's what I was going to say. It's probably yeah. like the next best one. So you are I, right, Quinny, probably in saying that he is second, but like the second is like miles down, I think, personally, right. from Almada. But yeah, the next best card right. is Gil. And the best summer card that has an auction is Gil. We're not talking about the best card. We're talking about the highest. We do, yeah, I don't Gil see a Neymar the there. I don't see a Neymar, but he's injured, so we might not get an auction for him. True. Might not yeah, be no one, no one else in America or Asia would, would auction for as much as Gil. What was the last Neymar? Did we get this year? I don't know. Bu what about a Bulanga oh, unique? A... Yeah, we already got this year's Neymar. Yeah, so oh, we do. Gil, Gil would go for more than Bulanga. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't I, know. I don't think there's much. I sold I sold a Gil super rare for the same price I sold a Almada super rare for. True. Yeah, no, I'll give you that. You did, for sure. And like but, I would carry Gill to a certain number that I think would be higher than what most people would pay for any other card. I don't know if Buanga carries on this this form. I think it could be, and it's a forward. Not that really, you know. We can't well, really compare I mean, them. Is Rod Rodri unique would go for a lot? Yeah, Rodri unique would. Rodri would definitely get into that top ten, wouldn't he? What about He's basically Kimmich? Kimmich Martinelli, seconds. not that he's that good, but just We don't young. even need to, to address Vitaly's comments about anyone better than Gil. Because we just know that's not true. One at sink. Did you, did you see Vela yesterday? What do you think Vela went for later if you didn't see it? Um, well, given that it's not on this screen here, I'm just going to keep scrolling. I don't know. Where do you go for? Oh, boy. No, there it is. 2.8? Yeah, less than, less than uh, Joao Klaus. Santa Claus is, is worth more than Carlos. Like Taylor. less than like Glessness. Well, Glessness is a goat. Just, I mean, he is. I wasn't even involved, player. Yeah, nobody wanted that card. Nope. Oh, Chelsea Enzo card? That'd that would be fun. That'd be, that'd that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, Chelsea Enzo. Have we had a Foden unique yet? No. Nope. I don't think so. De Bruyne? But we have the original De Bruyne unique that was like 
that stupid auction. Not Rashford. Everyone seems to like hate De Bruyne right now, though. We had a De Bruyne unique. I'm pretty yeah. Bambi. No, Bambi literally just paid fifteen for it. Everyone like hates De Bruyne right now. Like everyone hates him. Like no one wants a De Bruyne card. I'll take a Bambi did. <laughs> what? Bambi 15. wanted it. Oh uh, yeah, he paid fifteen for it. That's oh, this right. was a golden auction one. That's, that's right. That's yeah. right. Good times on that one. Oh, the oh, Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if he was a forward card. Yeah. I think he picks. I think he he would go in that Vinicius range, the fifty, maybe more. Michael but Morgan call that one. But kind of like Skelly is the kind of guy that I have the the Sean worry for earlier with Haaland. We were talking about oh, was it realistic for Haaland to keep up X amount of DAs per match that rate? I look at Kravitz Scali and I, I think, can he keep that up? You know, because he is knocking yeah. out some big numbers, man. You know, like. Um, I think his last five is a good uh, good answer to that question. Yeah, without Oshman. <laughs> yeah. Like he hasn't he hasn't hit a DA in five games. I know one of them was off the bench, but um, I think he's and okay. One of them was for Georgia as well, but yeah. still. Oh, we already went. Fling Fong was saying that. He did, mm-hmm. but I was. Oh, was it this year's fling fling? No, 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 no. It wasn't this year. Oh, wait, it was. Yeah. Ribbon Kazan? No. When did they off auction? No. No, no. Yeah. September. Oh, it was. They literally Great auctioned. Buy. <laughs> really good buy. When did he go? He went in August? September. September? Yeah. So he went like a month into the season. So yeah, he was yeah. definitely not what he was. Good call. They missed the boat on that one. Yeah. So. And, then, <laughs> and then Bambi bought the original. Nice. What nice. A card. nice profit for a bottle bore in seven months. Yeah, not too shabby at though. least. Hmm. Yeah, that's fun. You guys have anything else on this uh, Erling Haaland Man City unique? Other than Pavel making this quite a day for all of us? I'm happy he popped in. That definitely made it more interesting to all of us. That, that reminded me of when Mark came in with that huge bid for the original Haaland. And we all like, ah, like it, Mark, it was a like single bid came out and then Pavel, man. Yeah, that was fun. All right. Well, thank you to everybody for joining us. Uh, if you guys could please hit the like button on the video. It's always really appreciated. Thank you to everybody for joining us in the chat. Always really fun uh, to get uh, everybody else's perspective while we're uh, watching people spend absurd amounts of money on very nice looking JPEG. So thank you guys for that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. There's going to be a whole bunch of sober data stuff this week on the channel. So check in on that. I'll be back tomorrow. We're moving office hours to Tuesday with Maxime. Surely we will talk about this, um, this auction as well. So tune in for that. And uh, yeah, Quinny, Harry, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll have to have you guys back when we're not just watching other people spend money and talk about spending our own money next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>